This is a Shares for Beginners quick tip. Essential lessons, questions answered. Just as you study a company before you buy its shares, you need to study ETFs and what they're comprised of before diving in. Simon Caravan is a Senior Vice President at SGX Singapore Exchange. That's the Singapore Stock Exchange, where he works creating indexes or indices. I'm not sure what's the correct term, but you get the idea. Most passive ETFs are based on an index, and Simon has plenty of insights behind the scenes. In this quick tip, Simon warns about some ETFs that are designed only to attract investors. They may not have the best returns, or they may not even be comprised of the kind of companies that you would expect in the description. It's about looking under the hood to see the engine that's driving the ETF. Is it going to provide the returns that you expect? And is it truly reflecting the name? Once we go beyond just broad market indices such as the S&P ASX 200 and, and go into more niche or esoteric areas such as thematic indexing or even factor or smart beta indexing, investors really need to look past the label of the index and truly understand the underlying components of the index. So with the rise of thematic indexing and thematic investing, investors are now piling into uh, different types of ETFs, for example, such as uh, robotics ETFs, biotechnology ETFs. I alluded to the example before of internet technologies. Once you start going down this path, you have to ensure that the index provider is is actually offering an accurate representation of that theme, right? So one of the classic examples that I like to reference is the blockchain ETF or blockchain index. And investors have flocked to, to this index in the form of ETFs primarily because of the label. So they see you know, blockchain technologies as an emerging technology that will continue to grow and continue to be part of our lives. But the fact of the matter is that there are very few underlying stocks that specialize in this technology. And what you're finding is that it's, it's really the existing technology companies that are dabbling in, in blockchain. And you know, they, they really are just dabbling. I mean, they're not generating a meaningful amount of their revenue from this technology. So... You might see a blockchain ETF or a blockchain index that's comprised of companies like Microsoft or NASDAQ or comprised of companies like Google and Facebook because, yes, you know, in their annual report or somewhere along the lines, they've described the fact that they are investing into blockchain technology. But in reality, the risk and return profile of their stock price is, is not driven by the fact that you know they're they're spending a, a little bit more time, energy, and effort into this area. So investors have to be very careful once they start dabbling in, into you know themes or, or smart beta indices. Um, another example is you know the concept of what's known as a, a quality index. So these are available in the Australian market as well as in our market here at SGX. And what a quality index really aims to do is to choose companies with very sound fundamentals as well as uh, good rates of profitability. What investors need to be wary of is, okay, which financial metrics is the index provider using to, to find a representation of a quality company? And oftentimes, you'll find that they're using financial ratios and metrics that you know, are significantly stale and you know, beyond the fact that the metrics can be stale, they're also not using the right proxies to be able to address profitability as as a factor. So there are are a lot of issues in terms of the amount of rigor or the amount of uh, time and energy that's invested into developing uh, such indices to ensure that they're truly representative of the objective or, or the label that they attach to such indices. So how can a a consumer that doesn't really have much understanding of finance and financial markets, are there any signals or any warning signs that you could um, could give us? Yeah, look, um, some of the warning signs, I guess, you know, sensationalism is is a problem. (laughs) So (laughs) when you see an, an ETF issuer that has linked an ETF to an underlying index that promises significant returns and, you know, promises, you know, exposure to the most innovative companies in the world, you know, you have to play uh, the role of, of devil's advocate and 
like I said, you really have to try and dig under the hood at that point to truly understand what makes this ETF or, or index so special. If you look at the the US market, for example, I mean, you just lose count of the number of ETF issuers in that market and and the nature and the style of, of ETFs that are being issued through different types of indices. So, you know, it's it's something that investors need to study. Just as an investor studies a stock before they you know, dive into it. I also urge them to study the index and the ETF before they dive into it. There are some fantastic ETFs available to investors that allow them to adopt a a core satellite strategy to use them in a strategic manner or to use them in a more tactical way. So I'm not dissuading them in, in any way. I just, you know, encourage investors to really do their homework before they dive into any investment, uh, be it an ETF or a single stop. And um, that's the other thing as well, is that um, some of these ETFs are incredibly sophisticated. I think we've got synthetic ETFs, we've got reverse ETFs. And uh, again, these are things that you've just got to really be wary about as a new investor. Yes, there are many different types of ETFs. I mean, synthetics, inverse and leveraged ETFs. You've got uh, ETFs that are 100% cash replicated. ETFs aren't just limited to to equities exposure. You've got fixed income ETFs as well as ETFs that offer uh, exposure to commodities. And, you know, this is fantastic because ultimately investors now have liquid and transparent access to multiple different types of underlyings and and multiple different types of of asset classes and, and strategies which was traditionally limited or just linked to very expensive uh, managed funds. So all of a sudden, investors now have low-cost access to very transparent vehicles that can give them the same exposure in a much more liquid format. If you found this podcast helpful, please tell a friend, especially if it's someone who needs to start thinking about investing for their future. You'll be helping them and helping me to keep this show on the road. Stocks for Beginners is for information and educational purposes only. It isn't financial advice and you shouldn't buy or sell any investments based on what you've heard here. Any opinion or commentary is the view of the speaker only, not Stocks for Beginners. This podcast doesn't replace professional advice regarding your personal financial needs, circumstances or current situation. And thank you for listening to my podcast.